Hello, in this video I will show you how to use the SDL3 library to check how many webcams are attached to your computer. Select the first webcam, list the camera characteristics, show the camera stream in an SDL3 window and save images from the webcam to disk when a key is pressed. While I've recorded this video on a Windows PC, the same code should work on Linux and macOS assuming that you've installed the SDL3 library and you know how to compile and link a C program. Check the video description for links on various installation videos that I've recorded. Software evolves and things that worked at the time of this recording may not work in a few months or in a few years. Please check the video description for updates and corrections. Start by creating an empty Visual Studio project and add a new C file to the project. Next. Go to the project properties and select the latest C and C++ standards. This will let us use modern C programming. By default, the Microsoft C compiler only let you use some standard C functions like the ones for printing to strings or writing to files. Instead, it will suggest the use of the optional functions from Annex Cave of the C standard. Since I wanted this code to work on all operating systems and with most modern C compilers, like GCC and Clang, I will disable this Microsoft requirement. For this video, I will use the new SDL3 callback functions. In order to enable the callback interface, we need to define SDL main use callbacks. The first callback function required by SDL3 is SDL app init. This function is called only once at the start of your application. It is meant to be used for anything that needs to be initialized at the start of your program. The second callback is SDL app iterate. This is where your application state will be updated and rendered on screen. This function is called every time the system is ready to show something on screen. Third callback is SDL app event, which is called every time an event happens, like for example when the user presses a key, touches the screen or when the application is closed. Fourth and final callback is called once when your application is ready to exit. Here, for example, you can clean up the resources you've used. Next, I will define a struct that will store our app state. This will let us have a clean code without the need to use global variables to pass the app state between the SDL callbacks. For now, we'll store a window, a renderer and the width and height of our application. Let's also add some extra C headers that we'll need later. Because we want to keep our app state alive for the duration of our program and be able to access it from all SDL callbacks, we'll store this struct on, on the heap. Let's initialize the app state struct and define the window size. SDL3 will let us hook our own app state to the void pointer called app state they've predefined for us. This will be passed to all the other callbacks so we can access it if necessary. Make sure that you free the app state memory when the application is stopped. When the app window is closed, we'll get SDL event quit. We can return app success from the app event function, which will take us to app quit and properly stop our application. Next, let's initialize the video and camera systems for SDL. In case of error, we want to inform the user and print the internal SDL error.
Let's also create the window and the renderer. As a side note, SDL3 will take care of releasing the memory used by the window and renderer, so we don't have to release this ourselves. In the up iterate we can clear or fill the renderer with a solid color and show or present the renderer. Let's check if we've made any error. I have a typo, let's fix it and build the project again. It works. So now we have an empty SDL window. Next, let's check how many cameras are attached to our PC. The number of available cameras is saved in camera count, which you want to keep in our app state. SDL Get Cameras will return to us an array with all cameras IDs that it can find. As usual, we can check for errors. If all is well, we can print the number of available cameras. I will store a pointer to the device ID's arrays on our app state in case we want to do something later with it. Like for example, switch between cameras. We need to free the memory used by the device's IDs before our app is closing. Let's see how many cameras are attached to my PC. SDL found one camera, which is correct. Now that we know we have one camera available, we can open it in order to be able to see its capabilities and later be able to get frames from it. For simplicity, we will use the first available camera. In a future video, I will show you how to deal with multiple cameras. Let's close the camera before leaving the application. SDL3 lets us check the camera specification. We may want to see the number of frames per second the camera can offer and the default resolution of a camera frame.
My camera supports 40 frames per second and it has a 1080p default resolution. In order to draw the camera frames to our window, we'll need an SDL texture. SDL3 gives us each frame as an SDL surface which is stored in our computer memory. If we have a frame, we want to copy this to our texture, which is stored in the video memory of your computer, if you have a discrete GPU. For the first valid frame that we get from our camera, we need to also create the texture. Because we intend to update the texture for every valid frame we get, we'll use a streaming texture access. Now, next time we'll get a valid frame, we can simply copy its content to the texture. At this point, we can also release the frame since we don't need it anymore. When we have a valid texture, we can render it. Let's also make sure we destroy the texture before exit. Time for another test. Let's build and run our program. It works. However, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the image is a bit stretched. This is because, at least for my camera, the, windows, the window aspect ratio does not match the camera frame aspect ratio. A simple solution is to resize the window size to match the frame size. This works well for our case. However, in the general case, you will want to do something more complex, like defining a region of your renderer where you will draw the frame while keeping the aspect ratio of the frame. Looks better, the image is not stretched anymore. Next, let's save the current frame to disk when the user presses a key, like S. For this, we'll add two new variables to our app state, a flag for taking a screenshot and a counter for how many screenshots we took. In app event, we can detect when the user has pressed the S key and set take screenshot to 1. Back to app iterate. If take screenshot is 1, we'll save the frame to disk. We set take screenshot to zero because we don't want to save every frame to disk, just the ones for which the user has pressed the S key. By default, SDL3 knows how to save BMP images to disk. If you need other image formats, like JPEG or PNG, you can use the SDL image library. Let's check if it works.
A small problem with our code is that we'll override the previously saved image. Let's fix it by adding a counter to the name for each screenshot. Looks fine. Thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe. If you are interested in other programming subjects, please let me know in the comments.